Welcome to the latest episode of Worthy of Rescue. Here we break down the negative narratives we all too often absorb about ourselves or have had placed upon us. We want you, our listeners, to rise above the voices that tell you you're not good enough or that you're invisible. We're here to argue that each and every one of us is a unique and unparalleled creation made in the image of God, the creator of the universe, the ruler over all that is seen and unseen. We're here today to tell you about hope, encouraging you to embrace your individuality, recognize your value, and find redemption in searching for and knowing God's plans and purpose for your life. So let's dive in today and discover how you can step into your true potential, both in this life and into eternity. Today, my guest is Marianne McSpadden, author and speaker. Marianne will be speaking about something that is on her heart today for the one who may be listening. She has a message of hope for those of you who may feel you are drowning today. You may feel you are in the fire of life struggles. Marian, thank you for joining us today and for sharing your life with our listeners. Before we get into the meat of your message, can you share a bit about your backstory? Hi, Marianne. Hi, everyone. Hey. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I had the experience of escaping a religious cult in the dark. It wasn't like I was tied or locked in a basement, but my heart, my mind was locked in a system that was no longer serving me. It was actually a pretty nice system in this culture. It was very rural and I grew up in a farm. I loved the outdoors. I grew up with uh, seven brothers and sisters and had a mom and dad. <clears throat> we all worked together on the farm and it was a beautiful experience from that point. Um, I would ride my bicycle to a one room schoolhouse from first through eighth grade. Um, I loved the outdoors. I, I had a horse that I used to ride a lot. And I remember some of my favorite days on the farm were being out there riding across the fields uh, bareback with the wind blowing my hair. <laughs> and then uh, as I aged out of school and, and became a school teacher myself in that culture for seven years in three different communities, I had quite a few experiences that way. And then also I, um, became a midwife and I delivered uh, 75 babies in the homes. Mm. So that's a little bit of my uh, background of where I came from. So thank you for sharing a bit about your backstory and your life with us. Um, you're in Minnesota, so that is beautiful country. In the rain, in the snow, in the sunshine, in the fall weather. I know that Hey, you really want to share with our listeners today what the Lord has put on your heart, a specific scripture that you recently read and felt strongly that someone needs to hear this voice of hope in it, this voice of truth about them specifically. Can you give us more information on that? Well, I love Isaiah 43, um, starting out the first three verses. And when I was in that system, the world started getting really dark and heavy for me like depression, oppression was constant 24 seven. And the responsibilities I had of being a midwife were just crushing. And so I started this search of how can I live? How can I get free on the inside? And I cried, I cried hard. Like my pillow was drenched at night. And if I took a walk in the daytime, which I frequently did, often I cried uh, really hard tears. I mean, deep gut-wrenching tears on those walks because in my heart, I just could not move on without help. And I didn't know God could help me. I didn't know who could help me. And God did. He started putting people in my life that were a source of help. And then when I was able to pull enough of walls and layers and things that I had believed, about God, a way where that was removed, I connected directly to God. And he became so real to me. It was an experiential uh, connection where I knew God. And I experienced a love that was so deep and, and overwhelming. It, it brought instant peace in my heart, like, zoom, 
but then the the battle that I was in came raging back and I found words like Isaiah 43 so comforting where I made it personal for me he was speaking to Israel many years ago but when I read the word it was alive to me today and he said I have created you and I have formed you and made it personal for personal for me Mary fear not for I have redeemed you so if God was saying I shouldn't be afraid, then why was I having anxiety? Why was I feeling things that I didn't want to feel anymore? And he said, I've called you by your name. And that is really special when somebody calls you by your name. Yes. You know, even in business, we say it's powerful to use somebody's name in the conversation. There's something about being called by name that is so personal. You are mine. Oh my goodness. When you know that you're the one, mm -hmm. when you know that there is nothing that compares. And I was willing to walk through the waters and the fire to say yes to this love relationship. And it said next, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you go through the rivers, they will not overflow. And when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned nor the flame scorch you, for mm. I am the Lord your God. And he says, I have loved you a little farther down, and you're precious in my sight. And that's exactly where I had. I had that little safe spot to go to when it was so crazy all around me, and the waters smashed and crashed. It's like going across a river where it's kind of deep and the rapids are flowing. And in our mind can't quite separate all the things that are going on. Or it's kind of like a wash machine going around with clothing in it. Yes. You can't really identify one piece of clothing because it's moving around. But mm -hmm. when it stops, then you can pick out one piece at a time and see exactly what it is. And so the Lord is with us. We can uh, come into that safe space where um, it's no longer we alone it is we are in his love and in that safe space and he's continued to grow me in that not without my failures not without my setbacks but he was so faithful even when i didn't know how to be faithful in my weakness he was faithful and he's still faithful today his word also says that he is faithful to a thousand generations that just means every generation. <laughs> yes. Yes. And through that pain, through those walks, through the tears, God bent down and inclined his ear to you and he answered you. And yes. this this voice that you're sharing today, this scripture about Isaiah, dear listeners, don't be afraid for he has ransomed you. Marian, thank you for sharing these thoughts with us today. And there's so much more to your story. I would love to continue tomorrow if you could come back and let's discuss the book that you wrote. Pretty much everything you try doesn't work. Can we do that? I'd love to. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Great. So listeners, join us tomorrow as we delve into her book and discuss how Marion uses these thoughts when she speaks at women's groups, churches, or businesses, as she encourages those who are going through difficulties to remain in the joy of the Lord. God is our strength even when it doesn't turn out the way we thought it would.